Hello. Good morning. Hey, how are you? Fine. And you? I'm doing quite well. It's a good day. Hey, Ed, did you see the comment I brought you in Slack? Hang on. No, I had not yet. <laughs> Thank you for bringing it to my attention. I will definitely respond to that. I apologize. I've just, I've been a little slow getting going this morning. Hey guys. Okay. Hey. <clears throat> Good morning. Yeah. So give a couple minutes for folks to turn up and then let me, I'll bring up the project. Hey, can everyone see the share? Yep. Cool. All right. So <clears throat> let's see, starting on the in progress, update SDK to use the latest network service mesh API dependency. I presume this is about the registry stuff, Denise? Yep. Awesome. I, I think we're all kind of excited about that. Um, for those of you who may have missed it going by, there was a very long discussion about refactoring the registry API, because right now it's a little bit convoluted. Um, it sort of grew in unfortunate ways, so. Um, yeah. All right. Um, so the, that's actually related to the Simplify Network Service Registry API uh, PR that you've got open here. Um, do we feel like we can close this one currently? since we sort of talked through the first pass at it. Oh, we don't have Denise. Oh, there we have Denise. There we go. Hi, everyone. Hey, welcome. You got here just in time. Um, so basically, do we feel like we can close um, the Simplify Network Service Registry API uh, issue? Uh, I think, or, yeah. Yeah. OK. Yeah. Cool. I mean, I, I suspect we'll still have a few. We'll definitely be polishing it a bit as we go but I, I, I'm feeling good about the basic structure. So on um, the default policy examples, um, this one, I think, you know, if you'd asked me yesterday, I would have suggested that we close it. And then Denise went and did something really useful and pushed a PR to, to have a default behavior, um, which I think I've commented on. So I think that probably should roll into this as well. What do you think about that, Denise? Well, uh, I think we can uh, close this issue and uh, create another other issues for uh, other repositories for uh, okay. the same manager and forwarder in DTC. Yep, that's fine. So I, I've gone ahead and done that. Um, the um, go ahead and close that. And, and as I mentioned, there's a PR that you have open um, for creating a constructor that would provide the default policies. And I think I counter suggested that maybe we use a, a with pattern there because I'm not super happy about introducing new constructors for general use because um, it sort of breaks the pattern. Did that comment make sense in the PR? Oh, yes, okay. uh, I have, I have up applied uh, your oh, comments. Oh, cool, cool, cool. I will get back to that after the meetings this morning then. Um, so the bulk registry NSC registers endpoints with the wrong uh, network service managers. This is a bug that was open. Um, is this still waiting for a response from, if I recall correctly, this is when we're waiting for response from um, Terra 96. And I think we are still waiting for that. So. Oh yes, uh, here I have uh, one idea how we can uh, 
check this issue. I think we can mm -hmm. just create a Go test for MonoRepo and run this test uh, on all clouds and check will this uh, problem uh, reproduce. Okay, no, that seems like a good plan. That seems like a good plan. All right, uh, the advanced OPA policies. All right, this one feels like it's actually more about showing these in action um, than the particular policies themselves. So I'm inclined to keep this open as we build up the actual use cases. Uh, what do other folks think? Uh, I think I could put some check marks here already. <laughs> so I would, I would definitely say we can definitely check mark the create OPA examples. No question. Um, uh, yes. Uh, also, uh, I think uh, this uh, default policies can be used for a uh, single cluster and multi cluster. Oh, I, I think they will examples. turn out to be useful for that, but we need to get those examples up and going, I guess is my point. So, oh, okay, fine. Yeah, yeah. I mean, effectively, I think we've completed up to what we can do, you know, pending other, other work that has to get done. Because I, I suspect that what you've written will actually work beautifully for single cluster and multi cluster. But until we actually try it, we don't know. Yeah. Oh, yes. So, so we're waiting for a manager for order and the required chain elements to be up and running. Yeah, but I, I feel like we're getting quite a bit closer to that. Um, so, all right. Cool. So industrial grade VL3, um, I, I think has anything, I mean, obviously there are a number of things we're blocking on here. Um, has anything shifted on this in the last uh, week? Uh, here uh, I had provided on last week uh, DNS, uh, VL3 DNS part. Uh, ah, you can okay. Take a look. And also here uh, I'm working uh, on uh, interdomain spec for SDK. Mm -hmm. And I plan to provide this back on the next week. Well, that's fantastic. That is absolutely fantastic. Okay. Um, last time I checked this particular, the sometimes unit tests, uh, stop, refresh, at close, go routine leak. Um, last time I checked, we were still tracking this because it pops up from time to time. And we had a fix that we thought fixed it, but it only partially fixed it. And we haven't been able to track down Further than that, is that correct? Yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. Artem, how is the WireGuard VPP plugin going? Uh, yeah, uh, the last week I worked with timers for automatically maintaining the connection, key freshing, and all that. Uh, now it works stable, except one thing. Mm -hmm. um, for example, uh, if uh, in the middle of the data flow, uh, we decide that our keys are expired, uh, we send new handshake request to fresh it. Mm -hmm. And um, after that, we need to wait the response from the server with new keys. And since we need to stop the encryption before the response, otherwise we may encrypt it with the old keys and we lost that packet. That's that's very odd. Um, I would have expected that. Um, I, I would have expected the the far end to be able to look back one key for some period of time. Um, because otherwise, like structurally, if I send you a request and I have to pause all traffic to you until I get my response, that could be milliseconds, right? That that could be tens of milliseconds. Um, to get back the new key. And in tens of milliseconds, an enormous amount of traffic can back up. Uh, maybe you're right. Uh, and in, I see WireGuard uh, Go implementation and we wait that response uh, from server. And um, you, 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 you may want to actually go and, and see if you can ask the WireGuard community. Um, it, maybe it's just that I've, I've had my head too far down into the high performance world. Um, but basically, if, if I, because here's, here's sort of what you're dealing with, which is that if I drop that 
if I have to wait that tens of milliseconds before I start sending traffic again, then either I have to buffer what could be an enormous amount of traffic or, um, <clears throat> you know, I, I have to buffer what could be an enormous amount of traffic or I have to um, start dropping packets. And if I start dropping packets, then all my TCP connections are going to lose performance, um, which is bad. How often do we do, we do these key exchanges? Uh, it's about um, uh, 100 seconds, two minutes, it's about. Okay, yeah, so basically that's gonna be a problem for anything, that it, for any long running TCP connections. And maybe they have a good reason why they did this, but it seems odd to me. Um, so you may want to go and, and chat with them a bit and, and ask about it. And if you want to go ahead and, and pull me into that conversation, please feel free to, because I actually know the sort of networking minutia a great, uh, pretty well. And you actually understand how WireGuard works. So between the two of us, we're almost competent uh, to have this conversation with them. Did that all make sense? Yeah. Yeah, it sounds good. Okay. And good to be find it. <laughs> yeah, no, no. The goal implementation is waiting same same way for a handshake. Yeah, and, and, and the really interesting question is is what we may discover when we talk to them is they got sloppy with the Go implementation, but this, the kernel implementation is doing something smarter. Um, maybe what we discover. So. Okay, cool. Um, so it sounds like you're really, really close to having the WireGuard VPP plugin working uh, from a functional point of view. Um, yes, it's, I think it's very close and I need to, to clear my code uh, and uh, work, continue work with Simers. And I think that's all. Well, so the, the, that's all from the functional point of view. Um, the next thing of course is um, various levels of, of, of performance optimization. Uh, but it's probably the case that before we, we start getting too deep into performance optimization, um, that you, you probably want to start having a little bit of a conversation with the upstream folks to see if they have suggestions. This is your first VPP plugin and it's yeah. an interesting space to work in. So um, I, I, I doubt, you, you will doubtless learn a lot um, interacting with the upstream VPP community. Um, the one thing I would suggest when you get to that place is do make very clear that, you know, this is your first plugin and that you haven't started the performance optimization process yet. You're really just seeking feedback, um, and, and advice. Um, mm -hmm. because the attitudes are different. Um, if I come in and I say, this is the first time I've done this and I haven't tried to, to do performance optimizations, then if you've done something that actually causes real performance problems, people are much kinder about it in pointing it out. Yeah. Cool. All right. Anything else on the, the VPP plugin? Um, no, I think that's all. Excellent. Um, all right. So uh, the network service manager, I've seen those patches landing. In fact, I, I just started reviewing the, the one for the SDK side. Yeah, I'm moving parts uh, from uh, that's send the that, NS manager to SDK. Yep, I'm super happy about that. I I had gone and seen the PR that you had up there for for um, on the uh, the actual command NS manager repo, and I looked at that, and I looked at the other patches. I looked at that, and I looked at the other patches, and I said to myself, "Oh, he's just developed in line here. Now he's moving things to the SDK because <laughs> there was yeah we." There was way too much to actually go in um, in that original patch to the command repo, um, but it, but it was it's it's a very smart way to do the development. Um, so yeah, so that seems to be moving in, in nice chunks and pieces, which is good. Okay, um, anything else there, or is it just I think we're just to the mechanics of breaking things up and reviewing them and getting them in for the moment. Yeah, mostly, yeah. Uh, so interesting thing, it's the next step. It's, uh, we need to think about name for the integration test repo. And for example, test applications we will use like CMP and point and so on. Mm -hmm. So probably we just need to create some repository. Did you think okay. about naming for this stuff 
like integration testing and so on, ready to put okay. between pieces. Yeah, no, I, 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 I exactly. Like, how, how are we going to go about naming that the, those pieces? Because obviously, Kubernetes integration testing is going to be different than other kinds of integration testing. Um, and, and one of the other things that I'm, I'm sort of thinking a little bit about is um, the, the, the fact that we've, we've done what I generally refer to as clean living, meaning that I can go and instantiate a, a server um, from a library and then go decide to run it on something means that we may also be able to do a certain amount of pairwise integration testing. So for example, Frederick is working on the ICMP, um, the ICMP server stuff. You could imagine a scenario where I might instantiate a network service manager in my test. Yeah. Um, Actually, I have I examples for this in uh, <laughs> NS Manager repo. When I do awesome. exactly the same, instantiate new version of NS Manager, and that's just that's that's do, uh, all, us, all I want. <clears throat> yep, yep. That, that's actually fantastic, um, and it's actually a really good example of why you, generally speaking. Uh, want to try and do stuff in the SDK as much as possible because you, you don't want your commands cross depending on each other. That would be annoying. Um, so, but no, that, that's, that's, that's actually quite good. Um, but yeah, so I think my, my off the cuff thought is, is, and we can probably take this into a discussion with the broader community in the community meeting is, <clears throat> I tend to think about things like, uh, you know, so, when you're talking about integration test, actually, let's 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 bonus this to the broader community meeting because I think it's probably good to have in the broader community. But I think you're absolutely right that we need to talk a little bit about that next stepwise. Make sense? Yep. We can we can sort of haul out my now entirely antiquated by events slide deck that we did for talking about the the distributed repos because at least it gives us some structure in the past of what we were thinking. Not that that was the definitive decision because you learn things as you go but at least it gives us some structure to talk. Okay. Cool. Um, do we have any of the kernel forwarder folks here today? Doesn't look like it. And I don't see Ivana. Um, So we also have then this creation of ETH pair fails. Yeah, so I, I, I've reached out to Radislav. We, we've got a weird bug that somebody has come across where the uh, kernel forwarder is actually causing a kernel panic, which it shouldn't be able to do, frankly. Um, but it, somehow it is. And my only thought is it must be sending something to Netlink that is making Netlink grumpy. But we'll, we'll get back to that. Um, SROV support. <clears throat> um, I've seen that we're starting to pull together some of the pattern on the SROV stuff um, and yeah, the PR yeah. in the command repo, which is good. Yeah. Also, internally, we're discussing uh, where to put uh, chain elements for SROV. Should we create a SDK SROV, or we can put some parts into just SDK and some to the kernel SDK? Usually, yeah, so it I uses a Netlink library and uh -huh. some hardware. Go library and mostly what's all. So probably we can put it into SDK kernel. Yeah, I mean, my, my, my general thought is, is you know, you want to try and reuse the existing thematic SDKs whenever possible, but that doesn't mean that there won't be parts of the SROV SDK that, that don't need to go someplace else. We just need to keep an eye on it. So if you're basically just poking at Netlink, that's probably perfectly fine in the, um, in the SDK kernel. If you are, you, you, it, it, yeah, so I mean, it, it, they, I'll tell you how I think about the world because it may help you think about the world in, in sort of a, the similar way. I always think about the world in terms of the locus of dependencies that you're pulling in, mm -hmm. right? So if I am doing stuff that is just poking Netlink, then, well, the kernel already depends on Netlink, so I'm not expanding its pool of dependencies appreciably if I go and, and put it there which means it's, it's at least a decent candidate. But if I'm not going to, if I find myself, for example, having to pull in a bunch of KH dependencies, you probably don't want those in SDK kernel. Yep. And so that wouldn't be a good place for them. So. Yeah. So again, we'll create a pull request to the SDK kernel so we can check. It will add one extra dependency 
but we can check how big it actually and okay does it have cool, cool. any no. extra dependency or not yeah whether or not the dependency sort of fits thematically with with the the, the repo cool um on to do's um adding OP, uh, opa policies for nsm registries um yep that, oh, that we know that needs to be done but it probably gets done denise we probably do that after we do the registry refactor correct uh yep uh and it is a um issue related to opa for uh registry uh, the main idea of this issue is uh, adding OPA policies for the regist registry mm -hmm. uh, it sounds like uh, only authorized guys can use registry and uh, as we internally discuss it um, with you uh, this issue has low priority at this moment and probably we can move the issue to ice block <laughs> Uh, I, I wouldn't stick it all, all the way to icebox um, because it, it, some some things are low priority at, at the particular moment you're talking about, but they will be very high priority eventually. And I, I suspect this will eventually get to be relatively high priority. Um, but I mean, I guess, although frankly, the icebox is, is actually shorter. So maybe, what do you think, Frederick? Should we move this to the icebox for the moment? Yeah, I think that's I think that's an okay thing for for now. Okay, there we go. Um, okay, so I'm still working on the command forwarder, but it's getting quite close. I I finally solved a bunch of problems last night. There's still I've still got three or four that I know I have to go solve, um, including one of them. Do you ever have that moment where you read a piece of code that you wrote and you read it and you're like, what idiot did this? And then you run git blame and you realize that idiot is you. <laughs> I'm having that moment with uh, the inject peer code. And I, I, I need to go read it very carefully because a, a, some non-zero percentage of the time when I have that thought about code that I've written, I've just done something extremely clever and documented it poorly. Um, so I can't tell if I'm just, I was just really, really dumb when I wrote that code or if I was doing something really subtly smart. Um, I have to go figure that out. I think the authorized chain element has been generalized at this point. Is that correct? I mean, we've, we've got it really nice in general at this point. You literally are passing at a server. Yep. Cool. I'm inclined to close this then. Some parts in SDK, which still has to do in authorized. So probably. It still has to do what? Check. Uh, to do in a code. I'm sorry, I didn't hear you. Let me check. Uh, authorized client dot go has to do implementation authorization. So probably we need to or clean a bit SDK repo in case of authorization. I'm not sure okay. I was covering. Okay. Got it. So we, we may still need to go clean up authorized client. Um, yeah. Uh, okay. okay uh, can you please then move the issue to in progress? Okay, sure. Hang on. Let me make sure I move the correct issue to in progress. There we go. In progress. Cool. Thank you. <laughs> um, we've got the authorization for the monitor chain elements in there as well. Um, <clears throat> And then looks like we had a new bug that was open <clears throat> for an installation failure um, by Sergey. And we don't really know. We think this has been solved by Helm 3, but we don't really know. So I'm inclined to let it hang out for a little bit, but it's not in progress at this point. It's actually, um, Uh, I'll just drop it there for the moment. And then go mod control plane v3. Ah, uh, yeah, I should probably go back and pick that conversation up again. 
that's running into the fact that we have learned the hard way that multiple Go mod files in the same repo are a very, very, very bad idea. It's only sort of kind of supported. All right, cool. Um, anything else? All right, so I'm inclined to yield back the time and I'll catch you guys at the top of the hour in the community call. In the four minutes, yeah. <laughs> See you there. I, I gotta go start the meeting so other people can join. So yeah, totally. Yeah, yeah. See you. Cool. See you.